Hello, kindred spirits, and welcome back to Bits and Bobs Divination. My name is Caitlin, and today we are going to be looking in with the charms and tarot cards for some New Year's refreshes, so things to keep and let go of in the new year, as well as looking into the card of the year of strength. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back, my beautiful kindred spirits, and anyone new here on the channel today. We are going to be exploring the card of the year. We're going to be playing around with the charms quite heavily, and we're going to be playing around with a more simple what is to stay and what is to go in the new year. So we're going to be playing around with all of that here in a moment. But if you want to look even deeper into your new year, if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely feel free to check out the digital and snail mail readings that I'm offering right now for the new years where I'm going to be looking into your card of the year, things to let go of, to release, to embrace, things that you might find as obstacles for the year and then the strengths you have to overcome those, as well as looking into sort of your North Star card as well as some other more interesting ones that I think you would really benefit from. They're my favorite readings to do every year and the, re the readings that I think that are perfect if you've never had a reading before, these are a great one to start with as they benefit you for the entire year. So definitely feel free to check those out down below in case you're curious or you want to gift one to a loved one around you for the new year. Um, all the information I have down below as well as my Instagram and email where you can see even more information or ask questions. So with that all said, let's go ahead and look at the piles here. So for the piles, I decided to keep it quite simple and it just put a crystal for each. So here for the first pile, I'm just going to call this the cotton candy blue crystal as um, it is just a dyed crystal or stone here. Um, in this really pretty blue. So that is pile number one. For pile number two here, you have the choice of choosing this pile if you're really feeling connected to the snowflake obsidian, with these little snowflakes in this obsidian sky. So that is pile number two. And then last but not least here for pile number three, this is a crystal of red tiger's eye with all of these really pretty deep red colors and these little flashes. So that is pile number three. So as always, before you start heading to your timestamps and to your piles, I like to invite you to take a deep cleansing and intuitive breath with me here so you can really connect with your intuition, connect with the piles, connect with spirit and the like. So let's go ahead and take that deep breath together here now. And as always, there is no right or wrong way to choose your piles here. You can choose all three of the piles. You can flip-flop between them. You can take bits and pieces as you go along. Um, there really is no right or wrong way. All of the timestamps will be down below in the description alongside the chapter marks of this video for easy access. And um, if you want to look even further into the community, into the art magic, or into the other pick-a-card readings I have here, all of my social media links will be down below, as well as if you'd like to subscribe to see more of these pick-a-card readings. So with that all said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Hello group one, if you've decided to choose this little blue dyed stone of mystery, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to set it here so you can see it during your reading here today as we are going to be doing a New Year's sort of what should stay and what should go kind of reading. Uh, it's going to be only two cards and then we're going to do most of the reading through the charms um, where we're going to look into the strength card as it is the card of the year to look into your inner strengths. That are going to be coming forward in the new year. So uh, we're going to be keeping this quite simple kind of uh, to use as a way to take off some of the pressure of the new year of the resolutions that we might be making um, and just sort of look at just small little aspects of things that we can tweak and change and pivot in the new year if we do wish so. So feel free to get yourself cozy, get yourself ready for this and let's just dive right in. I'm feeling really excited to see what comes through. Uh, this modern witch tarot was feeling like coming forward today. I'll have everything listed down below for the decks and supplies that I use here but it's pretty 
pretty simple. Like I said, I wanted to really refine this down. So we're really only going to be pulling two cards here. So we're going to be pulling one card to look at what should go and then one card of something to bring in from the previous year into the new year. So uh, this is a collective reading. Um, so it's not going to be exactly specific only to you, especially when we get into the charm. So you're welcome to take what resonates and leave what doesn't. As we move through this, just a reminder, I do have um, more private, personal, digital, and snail mail readings available for the New Year's. So if you want to look into your specific card of the year, other strengths and obstacles that might show up in the new year and how you might overcome them, then definitely feel free to check out all the information for those down below and reach out if you're curious. But we're going to get right into it. So feel free to send your energy in through time and space. And let's see, group one, first off, what should go? So group one, what is an energy that you just don't really need? Or it's an energy you've outgrown, a lesson maybe you've learned from the previous year that doesn't really need to continue into this new year. So let's go ahead and see what that is. So we have the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords totally is a really good card to be getting when it comes to two cards we want to really let go of or <laughs> energy that we want to let go of as it has sort of a competitive and manipulative sort of energy to it. It's about using your strengths as a mean to gain from others or um, as you can see they they are kind of using all of their abilities, whether that's through manipulation, through lying, through being a bit sly, through competitive nature, even if it's one, you know, honestly and, and with, you know, really good skills, it, it still sometimes can feel a little like, Ugh, you know, because you're usually putting, letting someone down or, um, you know, there can be that power imbalance of one person is gaining more than the other. And so I really feel like this year, we're going to be seeing what your second card is here in a second, but I already, already feel like this competitive nature, this feeling of needing to compete with others, whether that's online, whether that's through the people in your life, whether that's through actual competitions you might be um, or might have found yourself in in the previous years, it might just not be your focus in this coming year. And maybe you're finding more of a harm harmony with others or a more equal balance, power balance with others in your life. And because, I don't know why I'm still holding the deck, but, and because this is a sword card, a lot of the sword cards talk about the way that we communicate. Um, the swords represent the way that we communicate. So that's why I was feeling like that gaslighting, manipulative, competitive sort of energy, um, which is great things to be letting go of for sure. But also I think that it can also be just that you might not be listening to others around you or you might find that in the previous year you hadn't realized how your words had a lot of impact and created a lot of impact on others around you and maybe that's something that's coming forward as well. There could be some truths and honesty that come out of letting go of this energy in the new year. So it, I think it's a an energy that's really wonderful to see coming forward as something to let go of um, as it can create so many so many um, more healing conversations moving forward and ones where those power imbalances can equal out. Uh, so we have that showing up here. Very exciting to see. But I want to see what you have coming in as something to keep from the previous year. A lesson maybe you're still learning or an energy that is just going to be most useful to, to you to really bring into the new year. So we're going to see what that is for you, group. On. So very simple, very fast. Let's see and reveal. Interesting, both five cards. And what I love about this is where the five of swords is almost always talking about a very clear power and balance, like, right, you can clearly tell that someone is gaining more than the those walking away, right? There's clearly something happening here where the, the five of swords can showcase that in a more negative light or a less useful light when it comes to those involved in the situation. The five of wands, where it can look a little jumbled and it can look like maybe things aren't really working out, people could be fighting here or, you know, in conflict, what I really like about this card is it can also show if you look at it from a different perspective and if you shift your perspective, right, and shift your your mindset, 
um, there's a lot of opportunity for everyone to work together here um, with some more clear communication to build something anew. Or you might immediately look at this card and think that they're fighting or having a difficult time. It also could just be that they're all really working together to build something and kind of working in this harmonious dance, right? Um, you know, shuffling from one spot to the other, thinking about how each step that they take can really impact the other. And so I really think that where before you may have found that you didn't really choose your words as well or you weren't as aware of how your actions and words really did make an impact on others, I think going into this new year, you're much more aware of the sort of dance that you're having with others, how a, com how a conversation goes back and forth and how the actions and words that you take really do make an impact on those around you and them as well to you. Uh, and so this feels much more in harmony, much more in balance in balance, not imbalance, um, than, than the other side. So really like that you have both of these coming up. They really feel like, you know, two sides of a coin. And I think the biggest way of shifting this card to the next is really just about mind, mindset shifts and being more present in the moment, listening more, being more compassionate, taking the time to sort of realize where, um, your communication or actions might be causing some of this imbalance and, you know, making a shift or making a change there in order to go more towards this five of wands where you're actually building and working together in much more of a harmonious stance here. So with these two cards in mind, I want to look into more into your new year to look into the strengths that you have coming forward. So the strength card is the card of the year and I'll go ahead and zoom you in so you can see a little bit more here. But the strength card is your card of the year. Or just in general, it is the card for everyone on the planet this year. Um, and the strength card is all about, you know, highlighting our inner strengths, our courage, our bravery to face fears, to move through difficult situations, and also to, you know, just notice the inner strengths that not only we have, but how those are reflected on others. So we're going to see what your inner strengths are using the charms, but I also wanted to pull a couple of watercolor affirmations here to see a little bit more context as well. So let's go ahead and pull those first. I forgot to mention, but the fact that you've got two fives as well, um, five is a is a is a number of change and a lot of really big changes. So you might also find in the new year that you're going to be creating really big wild shifts and changes as well, and maybe even building new communities with others. Um, I hadn't mentioned that, but that came through as well. Okay, so let's pull those affirmations. Okay, we already got three flying out here. We have look for the signs 404 and I was just talking about how, you know, we I was just talking about how those numbers really lined up and in this case 4 is what's coming forward in this card, but um your your number of the year so far has been 5. We're also going to see a couple others here. We have let's, let's try again and let go of hate. Um so like I said with that 5 of swords there can be kind of a bit of that competitive conflicting energy so the fact that that's coming in as well and has something to let go of and even fell sort of more towards the side as I flipped it over I really like that there's this shift already happening here so let's go ahead and pull the charms and see how they react to everything as well so do feel free to send your energy in through time and space and let's pull you some charms group one Okay, so you had a few different charms flop flopping right on out here, and um, immediately what I'm called to is the fact that where that let go of hate fell, uh, you got the um, manipulation charm, and we were just talking about how sometimes we're not trying to manipulate other people, sometimes we don't realize how our words are impacting others, and how our actions might be doing more harm than good, and usually it's not, you know, with, you know, nefarious purposes, but this is showing how communication get, can get mangled, especially when there can be resentment, especially when there can be hate behind 
um, our words, even in those minute little microaggression ways, um, that is showing up here with the let go of hate. So definitely something to still continue to let go of in the coming year. Um, and that, that can be a strength for you as you sort of open your mind to this. Other things that we have coming in here, we have quite a few like look for the signs energy, especially since you got the, um, the charm of if you guys have guides that you work with, right, your own spirit team, spirits and gods, goddesses, however you wish to see spirit in your life. It's showcasing that they definitely have things that they are leading up to um, and kind of, you know, spread it. I always think of this as like they're spreading little breadcrumbs to help you through the year. So you're definitely being um, protected and they're an inner strength for you this year, connecting with spirit more um, because you have quite a few showing up here with the look for the signs, this charm, which represents... Um, spirit sort of working through those breadcrumbs towards something that you that would benefit you we have the transformation charm as well coming forward and so a lot of charms showcasing that look for the signs so I really like that that's a strength for you is connecting with your intuition over the the coming year and connecting with guides and loved ones beyond the veil um, interestingly you got this little charm which kind of looks always made me think of like a little cd or something like that and that's showing up here right on the face of the strength card so you might find that music is really important for you moving forward into the coming year it could be a really good strength for you maybe helping you to get through um difficult times or it can also just be literally like just putting on a song when you need some motivation or to move through something. I just think that music can be a really big um, help for you this year. Also, like video games or movies. Uh, we also have the wagon charm, which is the um, the charm to showcase like a really long journey, a journey that takes a long time. It can be like a long road trip, like a, a very like, if you want to be very um, sort of specific with it. Otherwise, it can just represent a longer journey that you might find yourself on in the coming year. But the fact that it fell upside down is telling me that this year isn't about maybe you taking really long journeys, but rather you might find that you have smaller lessons that you learn throughout the year, right? You kind of chunk up the year versus having it be one big lesson or one big overarching strength that you present in the coming year. We also have a few other charms. We have the trim charm, which represents to trim something, to let something go. We've already had a little bit that we've talked about with that, but the fact that it is trimming and taking its time is that this is going to be something that you're going to be slowly working on in little bite-sized pieces. We've had that come up in a couple of different places, right? Bite-sized sized, um growth and lessons that you're working through uh, in the coming year and that they're going to be a really big strength to you and especially since it has that let's try again is that like when you're facing your fears or when you're bringing this courage and bravery forward it might not always work there's going to be times where it fails there's going to be times where it doesn't go the way you were hoping for and so just kind of trimming that aside trying again is going to be really beneficial to you in the mindset of trying again um is something that you're really growing into in the coming year. We also have the rock charm, which represents being quite grounded, quite um, rooted in your space. So when it comes to home and finances and things like that in your body and your health there, this could be a really good year when it comes to those things that you're going to be feeling a lot of, like you might actually be like working on, you know, strengthening your muscles. Maybe you're working on things within your home, right? Repairs or changing things up. Um, or when it comes to your finances, you, you might also just be finding that you're getting more of a steady income or something like that, that that's a really big strength coming in in the coming year. And then um, we have this little B here. The B can represent, especially in this case, um, it can represent working together with your community um, and understanding and really learning from your community right because bees really work in a community they work with a hive mind so especially since it's that let's try again and we had that five of wands before I really feel like you're going to be building something more with some new friends or new faces in your life that are going to become a really big strength for you um, finding your people or finding a place where you can build with others in a less manipulative way or a less like gossipy way competitive way and where things can feel a little bit more solid and a little less um, 
sort of toxic here, especially with that thou shall not kill charm right next to it, which is all about kind of like raining on someone's parade. So I believe those are all of the charms that I have here for you, group one. But uh, if you did enjoy this reading, if you did find it useful or insightful or interesting, definitely be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below which charms really called out to you most. Did you have one that really spoke to you or did either of the cards really resonate? I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, if you would like those uh, New Year's readings, all of the information will be down below on those if you want to reach out, ask questions, or learn more about them. Um, and if you haven't already and you'd like to, consider subscribing as I put out new videos every single Monday for these Pick a Card readings. And I like to sprinkle in other educational videos such as educational videos on charm casting or art magic as well. So do feel free to subscribe. But with that, I'm wishing you the best in your new year of 2024, what even is time, and um, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Hello group two! If you've decided to choose this piece of snowflake obsidian, then this is the pile for you moving forward into your new year's refresh. We're going to be playing around with only two cards today, as well as the, mostly the charms, to look into your inner strengths for the year, as well as what should both stay and what should go in the new year. Some things that are up to you obviously at the end of the day but um, energy coming through from spirit of some advice of things to let go of in the new year and things to sort of bring along with you from the previous year so I do have a new year's reading option that's very similar to this so if you want to look even deeper and something that's more personal and tangible for you then I have both digital and snail mail reading options down below and I can go even deeper looking into your compass for the year how to navigate your year obstacles that you might have that you'll come across in the year and the strengths that you have to overcome them so if you want to look in even deeper definitely feel free to check out those down below and get your own reading uh, or if you just have questions feel free to reach out but we are going to be using, like I said, mostly the charms, the modern witch tarot, some charm cast tarot, uh, all of which I'll have listed down below in case you're curious to see everything here. But we're going to be starting out with, of course, our tarot deck. So when I was thinking of this reading, the, uh, the song, you know, where they're like, should I stay or should I go, that song. That's what kind of inspired this entire reading. So we're going to see what should stay and what should go. So we're going to start out first with what we should maybe let go of or something that would be really useful for you to let go of a lesson maybe you've already learned in the previous year of 2023 or just something that no longer resonates with you, no longer is needed for you moving forward into the new year. So definitely feel free to send your energy in and let's see group wow that one fell out immediately so here we are group two you have the nine of swords showing up here as something to let go of from the previous year but i want to get more context so we're going to go ahead and pull the other card as well so what is something to stay something to keep something to carry over from the previous year or to nurture and grow in this new year so what should stay Okay, let's go ahead and look here. So you have the Nine of Swords and the Three of Cups. And the word that came through for me immediately when I pulled um, this card, even though I didn't know what it was on the other side, was the word trust. It was this feeling of trusting others, trusting in your own abilities, trusting in your resilience through a situation. Because like I said, the, the one that you had coming forward as something to let go of is the Nine of Swords. And the Nine of Swords, as you can see, this figure is trying to get a good night's rest and they keep waking up, keep waking up, keep waking up. And we've all been there, right? Especially before a test or especially before a really big day, a big presentation, an interview, something that's really important. Um, or just in general when we have, you know, a lot of anxiety swirling around in our brain and ruminating. That's kind of what this card is, right? It shows us all of our worst fears and then blasts them in our brain. And I mean, it's not something we can necessarily shut off. It's not something that is very easy to just be like, oh yeah, just don't do that, right? And I feel like sometimes, you know, when we do these simplified readings, it can come off as like, 
well, of course, just let that go. Just let your anxieties go. But I think it's less about letting these anxieties go and more reminding yourself of of and kind of switching your mindset to know that you are more capable than you think and more resilient than you think, more flexible than you think and have far more on your pros than your cons in most of these scenarios that are kind of ruminating in your mind, right? All these swords represent those thoughts. And so when we have them blasting in our minds, sometimes we just have to remind ourselves of that, yeah, the really difficult thing that we're worried about might happen, but how can we move through that situation? What can we do to prevent that situation? What can we do to move through it? And so I think that this isn't about necessarily letting go of the fact that you have anxieties or you might have, you know, situations that are going to arise that are quite difficult and are ones that we fear, but rather facing our fears more daringly and re- and facing our fears with more understanding Right? Because a lot of the time, fear we see as something negative, kind of like the same way we see anger as a negative emotion. But most of the time, right, we have feelings and emotions as a way to understand the world in a way to just like pain, right? If we get pain in, in our leg, it's just our brain saying, hey, maybe there's something wrong here. Maybe we should identify it, get curious about it, look at it from this angle, see what's going on, right? And the same way that these thoughts sometimes can bombard us is just us sort of reframe a situation or to look at a situation from a different point of view, um, giving us an opportunity to be like, ooh, this is something I fear, but how can we overcome those fears? And a lot of them honestly have to come from trusting ourselves and facing those fears and the fact that you have the three of cups on the other side of this um just tells me more of that trust feeling right this three of cups tells us um that you have a very diverse community around you of diverse perspectives different people being able to look at situations from varying backgrounds, ethnicities, point of views that are going to help you to better be able to look at the things that are maybe, you know, fears in your life and how you might be able to move through them, right? Maybe someone around you has gone through a similar situation and they, when voicing these fears, you might find a lot of comfort, maybe trust in them and trust in their advice that might come forward or, you know, lean on them for some support. So I really see that in the coming year, that support and trust and community, you know, um, connections could really be a strength for you. So those are sort of the two cards that we have coming forward forward for you. And I really think that you're just going to be leaning more into that trust, more into those communities in your life and more into the support around you to build up more of that resilience and to remind you that you are far more capable and more daring and more curious than you you may have thought to sort of face some of the fears more head on or to realize where those fears that you've had in the past might also just be sort of fading away maybe it's a fear that just is slowly leaving you um which happens sometimes too so we'll see how this continues to play out but we're going to be looking into your next little section of cards um or rather charms here to see more on the strength card which the strength card is the card of the year for you and the year for everyone um, on the planet. This is just the card of the year in general for Earth, which is the card of strength. Strength is all about, you know, facing our fears. It's about um, standing our ground. It's about finding our inner strength and finding our inner courage and bravery to get through tough and difficult situations, but also to find compassion and care and love in our communities. So I love that this is coming forward. We're going to see... Um, how that is connecting to your other cards, but also the inner strengths that are coming forward for you. So your biggest strengths in the coming year. We're going to be doing that with the charms here in a moment, but I actually want to start out first by pulling a couple of these watercolor affirmations cards, which I haven't pulled in a while, so I'm excited to see what you all get. So group two, inner strengths and affirmations coming forward in the new year for group two. I kind of feel like you have one more. We'll see. There we go. So the cards that you got here, we have don't waste it today with a tomorrow. So I always see this as like when you kind of put off something and put off something and put off something. And that honestly can, for me at least, um, 
you know, just heighten the fear and the anxiety about something or create more procrastination. So I can see that this is actually going to be a strength for you in the new year and the idea that you're going to be moving, you know, through some procrastination, moving through some of those fears a little bit more fluidly. You also have the head in the clouds charm, which is a really cute card because, right, sometimes we can see someone being, you know, with their head in the clouds. It just means that they're not as grounded or as... um realistic but sometimes we have to play in fantasy sometimes we have to pretend we are you know the night saving ourselves from you know the tower right so sometimes we have to play in fantasy sometimes we have to play in these narratives that we can grow in our own mind especially since you have the don't forget to play charm as well you seem like a very creative playful person based off of the the cards and um colors and affirmations coming forward also family and friends being a huge strength for you in the coming year we already saw that with that community effort of the three of cups and the support and trust coming forward there so family and friends are a huge part of something that you're going to be leaning on it also might be a fear that you're working through in the coming year as well if it's around family if it's about a friend if it's about um maybe needing to confront them with something so that can also be something that might be coming forward as well as something that you're going to find a lot of inner strength to, you know, bravery, to bravely move through in the coming year. So let's go ahead and pull some charms to finish off the reading and to see more of those inner strengths. So definitely feel free to really connect with them and let's pull some charms for you, group two. Okay, so let's see what you have here. Immediately, I'm feeling called to the fact that you've got the persistence charm, which also makes me think of resilience as well. Like, if you've ever seen, like, Beauty and the Beast with the little uh, cup, I think their name is Chip, right? Um, that's what I always think of when I see this, right? Because it's got this little chip in it. It's kind of like a chip on your shoulder, but in a really good way. Like, it it showcases that an inner strength for you is that resilience, is that feeling of like, even though you've gone through difficult situations, it doesn't mean that you can't continue or you don't have, that you've lost strength. If anything, you've gained more strength through these situations and have really grown. I see that this stagnancy to grow that maybe you've had in the previous years, this feeling like you can't grow or time isn't moving or, you know, that difficult situation really put you back it's it's really moving again. Time feels like it's moving again. Um, I also see the hope charm showing up here. This always makes me think of like Winnie the Pooh. Um, so there's this childlike nature to you as well that's a really big inner strength for you and it's something to continue to lead lean into in the coming year with that don't forget to play, the head in the clouds, the hope charm, the feeling of that like Winnie the Pooh energy, right? I think that you don't follow a very specific path, especially with the fact that you got the um, you know, taking the path less traveled charm, right? So this is the path most traveled and you're taking the path a little, you know, through the woods. Your head is a little in the clouds. You're going to play around a little bit more this year. And again, the fact that you have fear showing up here with the fearing of heart, opening your heart, fearing, trusting in others, I really do see that that's a shift, a really big mind shift um, that's going to be in perspective shift that's going to be coming up this year. You have two screws and like bolts that are showing up here too and then um, the turquoise charm that I always think looks like a little little foot, like if you've ever seen like those like wooden foots to create like shoe molds and stuff that's what it always makes me think of so the fact that you have so much like very earthy bolted sort of grounded energy tells me that you might be an earth sign and if you're not an earth sign you might find that you know a family friend um or um someone in your community is going to really be your strength your rock this year and someone that's going to help you to move forward and take those small steps other things that I am seeing, I'm seeing the transformation charm. This is um, transformation, the idea that like changing from one thing to another. So it could be a change in identity. It could be a change in the way that you see the world. Um, but 
what I like about this one is it used to be a spoon and now it's a pendant, right? So you're not also stuck in one way, right? You you may have always been seen as someone who maybe had their head in the clouds or, you know, whatever it might be, right? There's lots of different identities that we take on, brother, sister, mother, daughter, um, friend, painter, athlete, mechanic, right? There's all these different identities that we put on ourselves. And I think an identity might be shifting and changing for you in the coming year in the way that other people see you. Um, And it might be related to creativity. We also have the hummingbird charm that you're very fast moving and and very quick witted. Um, I think that you that can be why that anxiety can build up, right? Because, you know, those, your your brain might be moving at a million miles per second. But I think that also is a really big strength for you as well. And then you have the divine charm, the divine timing charm showing up here uh, with this little hourglass, or in this case, it's probably a few seconds glass uh, inside this little golden heart. So when I see this too, that you might find as the year progresses, especially with this intuition charm, that your intuition is really going to grow quite a lot this year in how you explore divine timing and allow things to happen as they should, or uh, maybe not as they should, as they do. Um, which feels a little vague. So baby, basically like where you're not trying to push something to happen before it's ready or trying to, you know, make something happen before it's ready, right? Letting something unfold as, as the chapter does, right? So I have that as a strength for you in the coming year as well. And then the final charm that we have here, we have the star charm for you. I love the star. It ha- is all about hope. Do you have so much hope coming into the new year? And if it's not right now, then I really think that that is going to be shifting soon because there's a lot of that fast energy, a very big shift coming forward with all this transformation, all this really big growth. It might take time. It might be that this shift is going to happen like after um, a couple of months into the year, like maybe by spring. But a lot of hope, a lot of hope coming in as a strength for you in this coming year as well. And leaning into hope, trusting hope, and um, seeing where it takes you. So those are all of the charms and the cards below here for you for the coming year. I do hope that you found something useful or helpful within this reading. And if you did, do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below. Truly, I'm always curious to see what you really connect with here, how the cards really spoke to you, what charms really spoke to you. I'd love to know. Like I said, I do have both digital and snail mail New Year's readings. So if you want to look even deeper into your year, if you want to really get into the nitty gritty here, then definitely feel free to reach out if you even if you just have questions or you're curious. Um, and if you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe as I put out new videos every single Monday that I don't think you'd want to miss out on, such as pick a card readings and educational videos on charm casting and art magic and the like. So definitely feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that all said, I'm going to go ahead and close off your reading. Thank you so much for being with me here in the new year, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Hello group three. If you decide to choose this piece of red tiger's eye, then this is the pile for you to look into your new year's refresh, the things to both let go of and the things to embrace or bring in in the new year. We're going to be doing so with the charms as well as the modern witch tarot. All of the supplies that I use today will be listed down below in case you're curious. But we're only going to be pulling two tarot cards and the rest is actually going to be over here with the charms for the majority of the reading. As we are going to be looking into the card of the year for everyone, which is the strength card to look into your inner strengths for the new year. But we're going to start out first with the cards. So do feel free to get yourself settled, get cozy, get comfy for this. And we're going to look into the things to both let go of and to sort of have stay in the coming year. Um, I was very influenced by that, you know, song where they're all like, should I stay or should I go? That's kind of what influenced this entire reading. So we're going to be seeing first off what to let go of. So something from the previous year to let go of or something um, to, you know, bring in. Uh, If you want to look even deeper, though, this is a collective reading, so as we move through the charms and as we get into the more um, nitty-gritty here, definitely feel free to 
keep what resonates, leave what doesn't. And if you want to look even further, I do have digital and snail mail readings out right now to look into your new year, where I can look into the theme of your year, the card of the year for you specifically, and to look into more of your inner strengths, how to go through some of the biggest obstacles that you might find coming into the new year, um, as well as what might be helping to navigate you or move you through the coming year. So um, we're going to be seeing all of that. If you want to see more on those, those readings will be down below if you want to ask questions or just want to learn more about them. All of the information is there. Feel free to reach out, but we are going to look into what to let go of. So here we go. Group three, what should stay and what should go? So what is a lesson to let go of and what is here to stay? Wow, your card is feeling very flippy and floppy, um, are your cards here. We have the hanged one. Interesting that it fell that way for specifically for this one, um, but I'm going to turn it the other way around. But we do have the three of wands and the hanged one here for you, as well as the hermit tried to come out as well for this card, in case you were curious. But let's go ahead and look at these even more closely. So what I find interesting is that for the three of wands, it's usually a card about action and getting things done and going after goals and passions. And I don't think that um, spirit or, or however these cards are coming forward is saying that you should let go of that adventurous spirit in this coming year. But sometimes I feel, and I don't know if you guys have the same feeling, it might be just me, but uh, do let me know in the comments down below if it resonates. But I find that sometimes I have years where it is all about action. It is all about traveling or trying something new or facing my fears or really going after things and then you have more introspective years right years where it's about kind of taking your time slowing down looking at things from a new perspective and and kind of you know not trying to fly through the year but just really taking your time and I really feel like this is going to be a year about taking your time it's going to be a year less about making massive transformations massive changes I'm not going to say that there aren't going to be changes there's always changes in the new year um, and in any year but I do think that this year it might just be one of the more slow down, calm down, more calm years, um, which might be something that you're very excited about. Sometimes, you know, we're less excited about that kind of just depends on your perspective here. But the three of wands is showcasing, right, of really putting your your best foot forward and really leaping into action. And I feel like, again, this is about letting that go of feeling like maybe even just at the start of the year, it's less about making really big changes or doing, you know, these really big leaps and bounds. I don't feel like that is really what this year is really going to encompass for you, especially at the start. This isn't going to say like it's the whole year. Like I said, um, there's always change that is, that's inevitable. Um, but I do think that it's a year about taking your time, especially since you have the hanged one here as well. And I feel like you might feel, I feel like for some of you, there's a bit of a resistance that I'm feeling, especially because the hang one, hanged one turned this direction. Um, but both the hermit card that I talked about earlier that showed up as well as the hanged one card talks about slowing down. It talks about taking your time. It talks about getting um, more prepared before you start because as you as you can see first off they get, gain a new perspective from the situation that they're in they're hanging upside down from a tree right of course they're going to have a very different point of view and a different perspective but the only way that this perspective can come forward is by you know tying themselves up figuratively or less figuratively and more energetically right sort of tying yourself up holding yourself back for a minute before you leap forward and just thinking about the perspective shift, thinking about the changes that you might want to make before leaping into them, right? It's kind of like um, thinking before you speak, right? Or thinking before you leap. So that's really what I'm seeing here is they definitely feel connected in the fact that the Three of Wands is telling you that it's not that this isn't going to be an action-oriented or changing um, pace kind of year, but I really think that the pace of the year is going to be much slower. It's going to be less... Um, intense. It's going to be a lot more, maybe less um, filled with action and, and just like events and, you know, 
it's less busy is really how it feels. It feels less busy. And so the hanged one is just telling you that it's okay. It's okay for it to be less busy. It's okay for you to slow down. It's okay for yourself to sort of gain a different perspective. And sometimes the only way we can do that, the only way that that perspective can come forward is by, you know, slowing down, giving ourselves a little bit of a, a you know, a time out from things. So that's really what I have here. I might, I do feel like because there is that resistance there, there might be a bit of FOMO that, that has to happen or a bit of, um, giving yourself permission to slow down. But, uh, in this action oriented world that we live in, especially in, um, more first world countries, right? Everything is just flying by. Everything can get very chaotic and busy. So this is your permission to slow down. So we're going to see what inner strengths are coming forward with the strength card here to see what the charms and um, any other messages might be that come forward. But already an inner strength coming forward for you is slowing down, giving yourself grace, being more compassionate towards yourself and feeling less like you must go, go, go to have value or worth, right? Productivity definitely does not equal worth. So we're going to see what other cards are coming forward for strengths for you in the coming year. These are things that are going to help you to move through different obstacles that might arise in the coming year. Um, so we're going to see any affirmations that are coming forward. So let's see. I feel like there's a couple more here. Oh my gosh, when I said a couple, I, <laughs> I clearly meant five or six. So we're going to see um, what you have here. But these are a few of them. We have, of course, process, progress, not perfection as one of them. You also have here study and learn, which is all about taking your time. You know, when we're studying and learning something, ex especially when we're older, we just assume that things are going to be easier or we're going to pick things up a lot faster. But sometimes there's that learning curve and you might find that you're going to be moving through that learning curve this year. You have the I'm resilient charm showing up here or card rather, the I'm resilient card. So you're definitely stronger and have much more resilience than you give yourself credit for. You have the grow, evolve, transform charm. But what I love about this is it shows all three of them, right, grow, evolve, and transform, which means it's going to take time, just like a butterfly, right, they've got to go through each of the stages, um, it takes timing, it takes a much slower process, and I think slowing down to let that happen is important, and of course, you've got the it's a marathon, not a race card as well, so you have a lot showing up here about slowing down, taking your time, finding your own new pace for the year, and I think that that's okay, it's just giving yourself that permission, so with those in mind, let's go ahead and finish off your reading with the charms. We're going to be pulling these to see more of those inner strengths and, um, you know, really strong cards for you or strong charms coming in for you for the new year. So let's see group three. Okay, so you had more tricky charms. I felt like I had to go in there for a couple of different times. So we're going to see what you have here. First off, the one that is calling to me is this little marble charm. I've recently put this in here. I have two marbles in my collection. So I feel like if both the marbles show up, I'm going to actually zoom you in a little bit closer. But if both the marbles show up, it means you've kind of like lost your marbles or you don't have, you know, that, that saying of like lost your marbles. But I feel like you, you know, you know where you need to be. You know what pace is best for you. Um, it's just allowing yourself to have it. So it really doesn't feel like you've lost your marbles or you're in this more chaotic state if anything by taking your time you're only going to gain more of your marbles back right grounding back down 
into the earth, allowing yourself to take your time. And, you know, it's a marathon, not a race. So we also have the awareness charm showing up here with I am resilient. So I really feel like you're going to be more aware of your resilience coming into the new year. Um, you have a magic charm, magic charm showing up here on the strength card, almost like a little hat on their head. Um, so what I really like about this one is it it makes me think of like, you're also going to be finding a lot of not only resilience, but a lot of strength and courage and bravery through magic. So this could also be like legit using like witchcraft and magic. But I also think it's just like through divine timing or understanding um, your own intuitive gifts or your own unique charms that you bring forward as a strength moving you forward as well. You have on the study and learn charm the tower, and this can either be a tower charm or a manipulation charm, but in this case I'm getting the tower, and if you guys know tarot, the tower card is all about dropping down foundations or having to build from the ground up, and so the fact that you have study and learn and, and you're wanting to like race through things, it's going to be just that I think this year it's going to be a strength you have to learn. It's going to be something that the idea of um, taking your time is something and being patient is something that you're going to be growing into this year. It's definitely a lesson you're going to be very highly moving through in the coming year and something that you're going to be building a foundation on as the year continues to grow, as well as something that you might be studying or learning and, and knowing that it's going to take time to get there. You have the responsibility charm showing up here with the uh, the ring. So when I think of a ring, it represents you know, responsibility, it represents um, a promise, right? So there might be something showing up there around like maybe a marriage that could be coming up um, if you want to think of this more literally. Uh, otherwise, it can be that you're growing and evolving and transforming when it comes to the responsibilities that you're going to be um, in charge of in the coming year and that that's going to be something that you're going to be strengthening and growing through. You also have the uh, ram charm here. Uh, as well as a Pisces. So we've got sort of Aries and Pisces energy happening. So this can be talking about where this it's a marathon, not a race, is that the time that you're going to have to be slowing down the most is during Pisces and Aries season, which is, I believe, both March. It's like the end of February into the beginning um, and throughout the majority of April. So basically February through April, this is the time where you can really take your time and slow down. Like I said, I don't feel like the whole year is going to be slowed down, but I feel like it's just really important at the beginning. Uh, the last couple charms here, you have the smoothing things out charm. So you're really good at smoothing things out. Um, just as in general, as a person, I think moving through situations that are quite difficult, I think you can really calm people down, you know, um, de-escalate situations. You have the Neptune charm, which always makes me think about diving deeply into something, diving deep into our psyche or our emotions, so where you're kind of growing and transforming. That might be around your own creativity or your own intuition. And then underneath that, you also have the chain charm, which this one always makes me think of for whatever reason, like what's chaining us down when it comes to our finances or our career goals or our job. And so the fact that it's falling next to the grow, evolve, and transform and that it's a marathon, not a race, is making me think that those are connected. So what might be slowing down is something around your career around that time. Um, but I think because it's falling in all of your strengths, it's it's definitely something that maybe seems like it's not going to be helpful, but in the long term when looking back, it's something that was very necessary and needed, that slowing down, that time to sort of understand what might be going on here. So I do believe those are all of the charms and the cards here for you today. If you did enjoy this reading, if you got something out of it, if it was interesting or intriguing, definitely be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below which charms really connected with you, maybe different affirmations, ones you might even end up putting in your planner for the year. I would love to hear. And also, if you haven't already and you'd like to, feel free to subscribe to the channel as I put out new videos for pick a card readings, educational videos on charm casting and art magic, and I hope to do even more of those in the future. So definitely feel free to subscribe. 
And like I said, if you want to look even deeper into your new year to look into more of your inner strengths, other obstacles that might be showing up in the new year, the themes of the new year for you, and things beyond just these couple first few months, then definitely feel free to check out those New Year's readings down below where we can look more deeply and more personally for you for a digital or snail mail reading. Um, so I do believe that is everything. Thank you so much for joining me here at the start of a new year on this channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!